Hello once again in the vibes of the universe. I will begin quickly with some readings from Norwegian ground magnetometers. Orientation of geomagnetic field over polar region is opposing the direction recorded at lower latitudes. It would be normal if not the fact that at the direction at lowest latitudes is again different and points to the south. Couple minutes earlier the directions were screwed up even more. This is the impulse which is responsible for those disturbances. There is not too much happening on ACE solar wind plasma readings. Although there is some action on the magnetic field graph, where the orientation of IMF made some kind of shift and the BZ component became positive. Let's make some fun and compare it with the geomagnetic field readings from Canada. There was a visible and pretty strong disturbance, recorded mostly at mid and lower latitudes, which started around 5 UTC, on 11th of October. Similar disturbance was recorded as well in Europe, but it started around 21st UTC on the previous day and finished around 5 UTC, just when the disturbance was starting in Canada. But now it is time to look at the shake of the day, which is the 6.3 magnitude earthquake in Japan, and which took place 35 past 2 UTC on 11th of October. For some reason the ionosphere monitors are not updated for last couple hours, but we can see some interesting magnetosphere activity on SWMF plus RCM monitors at the time of quake. but it is visible much better on the new magnetopause position monitor. A visible backside influence. Look what happened with the bow shock soon after. Notice as well that there is a direct electromagnetic connection with the planet on the night side. Of course I have to mention the geomagnetic disturbances which at the time of quake were recorded by GOES satellites. Couple hours earlier started a proton event caused probably by the last filament eruption followed by hydro flare but it wasn't rather connected with the disturbances. Now I would like to show you readings from Kiruna Rheometer since the beginning of October. Quite a lot of disturbances when we consider that the space weather was rather calm. It can be connected with the density spikes, which started to increase since the 8th October. Here you can see some of them. Nice one. Something in my guts 
tells me as well that the disturbances on Kiruna rheometer can be connected with those bursts on Schumann resonance monitor, which grew in strength in last couple days. Funny things are taking place right now in the magnetic orientation of heliosphere. According to all possible models, Earth supposed to be placed right now in a sector of IMF with negative current flow. But the problem is that actual IMF readings from ACE satellite show something completely different. Space weather can be sometimes annoying. In last couple weeks I was trying to start discussing the changes in the behavior of radiation belts, which started to gain charge in last two months. It seems as well that the amount of particles high above the surface of our planet has a visible influence on the density of electrons in the ionosphere. The cloud became much more dense when radiation belts started to be recharged, after a longer time when the charge was much lower. But now I have a bigger problem. Maybe some of you notice already that most of CCMC models of magnetosphere and ionosphere doesn't work since the morning of 11th of October. Only the radiation belts were updated a couple hours ago. This is the last image. Poof! Particles are gone once again. Just at the high energy bands, so at the lowest ones. Density of ionospheric electrons dropped as well. Coincidence? You can see nicely as the density drops just after midnight October 12th. If you still think that the disappearance of negatively charged particles is some kind of error in the simulation, look at those monitors which show nicely the amount of electrons at different energy bands within the radiation belts. Hmm, it seems that in the night of 12th October there was an impact of a very dense wave of particles which was followed by a serious increase of solar wind velocity. Coronal hole stream? Thanks to CCMC, which still didn't fix 90% of their monitors, I am not capable to show you how the impact affected the ionosphere and magnetosphere. After a couple days, when the geomagnetic field was relatively calm, two quite strong jolts appeared on Norwegian magnetometers. One is taking place right at the time when I'm recording this movie. In the upper right corner you can see the scale to compare the strength. I've managed again to capture the latest jolt on the magnetic field vectors monitor. Notice that the directions of geomagnetic field differs even for the station at the same geographic latitude. In the difference to most of those geomagnetic jolts those two were recorded at the same time in different parts of the globe. When you look at the right part of this monitor, you will see that just as in Europe, last jolt affected the field in opposite directions. Most possible cause of the latest jolt can be seen on the ACE readings, where the orientation of IMF made another sudden flip, what was followed by a drop of solar wind density. It seems that the second geomagnetic jolt caused even more disturbances than the first one. In Kiruna the strength of field dropped by 400 nanoteslas and the K-index grew to 6. Poe's satellites recorded that the auroral power grew to 78 gigawatts during this event.
which affected the field on global scale. And this is what happened during this time. BZ magnetic component of the IMF jumped suddenly from minus 7 to 7 nanoteslas, around 17 UTC. Two and a half hours later, around 1930 UTC, another interplanetary shock took place. The BZ component turned south. But look here, Poe's satellites recorded that the auroral power grew to 97 gigawatts at 18 past 18 UTC, when the BZ was positive. This is a clear reverse response for the IMF orientation. The funny side of the entire event is the fact that I have simply no idea what kind of solar event caused it, as it doesn't look like a CME nor like a coronal hole stream. Although no specialists tell about that coronal hole stream impact on their forecast discussion page. But check out this, according to NOAA, temperature increased slightly as well, while I see here a clear drop. Besides, coronal hole streams shouldn't cause backside shocks. Anyway, the KP index was raised to 6, so we have our official geomagnetic storm. And with this information, I will end this episode. Class dismissed. Be safe. Peace.